Hi everybody. In this video, I'll be explaining the outcome of a chemical reaction. The reaction that we're going to look at involves magnesium. That's the metal ribbon that I'm holding with the crucible tongues. And the magnesium will react with oxygen that's in the air in the classroom. Here it goes. All right, so here we're seeing the reaction, the oxidation of magnesium, where magnesium ribbon is combining with oxygen present in the air in the classroom. It's a pretty good looking reaction. You might be asking yourself, what is a chemical reaction? Let's take another look at that reaction between magnesium and oxygen to help answer that question. A chemical reaction is a process that breaks existing chemical bonds and forms new chemical bonds. The reaction breaks existing bonds in magnesium and oxygen and forms new bonds between magnesium and oxygen. This video will discuss why the reaction happens, what kind of bond forms between magnesium and oxygen, what is the role of electrons, and how does conservation of matter play a role in the reaction process. Let's start by taking a closer look at why the reaction happens in the first place. Okay, if you want to understand a reaction like the one you just saw, you need to know about valence electrons. These are the electrons in the highest energy level for an atom. Let's find magnesium and oxygen on the periodic table. First, we find magnesium. Its atomic number is 12. Then we find oxygen. Its atomic number is 8. Let's talk about magnesium. Because magnesium has 12 protons, it also has 12 electrons. These electrons are distributed in the first, second, and third energy levels. The first energy level has two electrons. The second energy level has eight. The third energy level has two electrons. This means that magnesium atoms have two valence electrons. For oxygen, there are electrons only in level one and level two. The first energy level has two electrons. The second energy level has six. This means that oxygen atoms have six valence electrons. If we look at a Bohr model for magnesium and oxygen atoms, we can see that the valence electrons are the ones in the outer ring. For magnesium, there are two valence electrons. We see that in the third ring, the third energy level. For oxygen atoms, we can see that there are six valence electrons. Those are found in energy level two. So the formation of a chemical bond allows the atoms to become more stable. When magnesium loses two electrons, it loses its third energy level. And that means that the first energy level, the second energy level, are the ones that are completely filled. This makes a stable magnesium ion with a plus two charge. For the oxygen atom, it becomes stable, but in a different way. It is gaining electrons. The oxygen atom adds two electrons to the second energy level. That energy level is now full. It has eight electrons, and this creates a more stable oxide ion with a minus two charge. How do we know what kind of bond forms between magnesium and oxygen? So what happens in the process of ionic bonding anyway? Well, in ionic bonding, there is a transfer of electrons. In the formation of magnesium oxide, remember that there are two valence electrons in magnesium atoms that are going to be donated. The magnesium gives them away. Those two electrons are transferred over to an oxygen atom. Um, and this transfer causes each of the atoms to form a more stable ion. The magnesium, by losing two electrons, forms a more stable positive two charge ion, magnesium two plus. The oxygen atom, by gaining two electrons, forms a more stable oxide ion with a charge of minus two. So why is the formula of magnesium oxide MgO? Why not MgO2 or Mg2O or some other thing? Well, to understand this, we need to know that in ionic compounds, the ions, the positive ion and the negative ion, are going to pair in a way that produces a neutral compound. Remember, the magnesium atoms are losing two electrons, giving them a plus two charge. The oxygen atoms are gaining two electrons, causing them to form a minus two charge ion. So the ions will pair in this compound in a one-to-one -one ratio, Mg2 plus O2 minus. The charges add to zero, and that means that I have an electrically neutral compound. Why is magnesium oxide an ionic compound? 
to answer this, we need to know about electronegativity. This is the pull that atoms exert on electrons. Oxygen has a very high electronegativity, 3.5. The electronegativity for magnesium is 1.2. When we find the difference, 3.5 minus 1.2, we get an answer of 2.3. Now, anything over 1.7 is considered to be a bond that is ionic character or an ionic bond. How do electron configurations relate to this reaction? So you might be asking how electron configurations factor into this reaction we're talking about in this video. Magnesium atoms start with an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. Oxygen atoms have an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Now, when the magnesium atoms lose the two valence electrons, they change their electron configuration to 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Now, the second energy level is completely filled. This makes the magnesium ion plus two charge stable. The oxygen atom gains two electrons. This changes its electron configuration. Now, as an ion, it will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. This is also going to stabilize the oxide ion. With eight valence electrons, it has a complete outer shell. That makes the oxide ion stable. So this is how electron configurations help us to explain why magnesium atoms lose two electrons and oxygen atoms gain two electrons and why the compound that's formed is formed in a one-to-one -one ratio, giving a chemical formula of MgO. The balanced equation for the reaction seen in this video is 2Mg plus O2 yields 2MgO. Balanced equations show the conservation of matter. For this reaction, the balanced equation means that for every two atoms of magnesium, they'll react with one molecule of diatomic oxygen to produce two formula units of magnesium oxide. Conservation of matter. Means that atoms are not created and atoms are not destroyed in reaction processes. This means that the total mass will stay the same. I'm going to share some clips and links for videos you might find helpful to explore this topic further. The first clip is from a stoichiometry experiment which produces data which can be analyzed to determine the ratio of magnesium and oxide ions in magnesium oxide. Just need to get it hot enough using the blue part of the flame. And there we go. So we can see that we're really releasing a lot of energy here, a lot of light. Uh, there's a lot of heat production taking place. So I'll put the magnesium ribbon into the beaker and I'm going to add 25 milliliters of that one molar hydrochloric acid. So we can see a lot of evidence of chemical change here. We're seeing bubbling, fizzing, and that is a result of the magnesium ribbon reacting with the hydrochloric acid. Now, let's look at how we would diagram the formation of an ionic compound like sodium chloride. Sodium chloride has sodium, obviously. Sodium is an alkali metal. It has one valence electron. Chlorine is a halogen. Halogens, located here on the periodic table, have seven valence electrons. One, two, three four, five, six, seven. When this ionic bond is going to form between sodium and chlorine, sodium will donate an electron. That electron will be transferred to the chlorine, which is an electron acceptor. So that electron will go right here. This is going to stabilize the chloride ion. It's a pretty good looking reaction. And now I am totally blind. 